what, what the haters talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? On the road again. I'm in Sacramento, California for the George Floyd Peace Walk to the Capitol out here with my boy Dion Taylor. We are going to be meeting up at the Golden One Center at 10 a.m. today. 10 a.m. today is going down. Don't meet me there, beat me there. Make sure you wear black and wear your mask. We're gonna get a little justice. Now, let's get into this topic. We got a whole entire unit of the Buffalo Police Department who has resigned after two officers were suspended amid outcry of police officers pushing a 75-year-old man to the ground. All 57 members of the department's emergency response team resigned from the unit which responds to riots and other crowd control situations, according to media outlets. The emergency response team members have not quit the department, but have stepped down from the tactical unit, the Buffalo News reported. Check it out, fam, you're gonna love this. Our position is these officers were simply following orders from the deputy police commissioner, said Buffalo Police Benevolent Association President John Evans. It doesn't specify clearly the square of men 50 and under or 15 to 40. They were simply doing their job. I don't know how much contact was made. He did slip in my estimation. He fell backwards. He fell backwards because he was pushed backwards, dummy. The man who fell is in the hospital. He is alert. He is oriented. You know, the fact that they resigned is very disturbing because it tells you that they didn't see anything wrong. Or even worse, they knew it was wrong, but they did it anyway, and they quit to prove a point that you need them and without them it's going to be chaos. See, that's where these municipalities messed up. They allowed these police officers, these unions to become too strong. This fool watched the same video we watched. I'm talking about the president of the union. He watched the same video that we watched. Yet he concluded that in his estimation, the guy just slipped. Yeah, uh, slipped on his knuckles. Well, it wasn't his knuckle, he pushed him, just straight pushed him. But still, it's gonna be hard, family, it's an uphill battle. They see what they do, they scare everybody with the boogeyman tactics. See, they fall back. Somebody kills somebody, commit a crime. They just sit back a little bit because they don't mind people dying and getting killed and stuff. They don't care about all that stuff because it's all with them, it's all about power and control. So they don't care. So they'll sit back and just watch stuff happen and, and wait until the, the public say, daddy, uncle, mercy, mercy. They, they'll just wait for that to happen. And sure enough, you have the public come crying, oh, we need you, please. Then they come back and then they enact a new law and then they stretch their authority, beat some people up, kill some people. And, and then, you know, the, the public have a false sense of security that because the police kill somebody that they took a bad person off the street. Because the police lock somebody up, they took a bad person off the street. They don't care what the reason was where the po police locked them up, he must have did something especially if the person already has a record. So the public really is complicit in the police be behaving the way that they do. 
because the public have a false sense of security that the that the police is actually out there working for the public and the pub and that nothing can be further from the truth. Uh, most of these officers out here on the streets are working for themselves. They don't they're, they're not interested in harmony. They, they care nothing about that. It's all game, baby. It's a hustle. They sit around and just when they wrote most of their interactions with people, they are causing problems. They're writing tickets. They're harassing people. They're beating people up. They're shooting people. It's just a bad experience. So when they come around, it's like most of the time it's bad news. And for those people that think that they're really being protected, the cops really don't show up until after the crime is committed anyway. Police, my house has been broken into. Police, there's been a mugging. Police, we got a robbery in progress. Police, the police never show up when the robbery is happening. The, 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 the bad guy's always gone. Well, you know, in many cases, the police is the bad guy, but you know what I'm saying. The suspect is gone already by the time the police shows up. So most interactions that people in the hood have with the police, especially people in, in, in the hood, is bad, bad, bad. A lot of times, ain't no action until the police bring the action. They be kicking up the dust. They kick up the most dust in the hood. They kick up way more dust than the game bangers. Way more dust than the dope dealers. Way more dust than just anybody who's walking those streets. The police, they're the ones who's causing all of the strife. Those fools, when they step down from that tactical unit, they should have been fired right there because they all stepped down to prove a point. Man, we're going to mob together. We're going to rob together. We're going to beat people up together. And we're going to have each other's back. That's a very dangerous sign to put out there. If I was... If I was over them, I'd get rid of all of them. Every single one of them. Go find some work somewhere else. Because I know. That let me know. That's the nail in the coffin for corruption. Yeah, I wouldn't trust either one of them. If I was living in that community, I would be very, very concerned. It's sad, man. Every single one of those officers. And it was, what, 57 of them? One of y'all going to hear this message. Somebody that knows one of y'all is going to hear this message. So whether it's you or somebody who knows you, the message is your mama should be embarrassed and your daddy should have pulled out. No more talk. What the talking about? Yeah.